Christian Doyle. Emma Larkins. Tifa Robles. Welcome back. Here we are, week two. We want to apologize, first of all, for starting a little bit late. As it is a live show, there are going to be plenty of technical difficulties as we are still trying to work out the bugs and the kinks in this, uh, in, you know, this tech stuff. I was uh, going to say we all have to share one bathroom. That's, that's really, yeah. That's, you know, <laughs> like, looking this good is a full-time job. It takes forever yeah. to get my hair powder room. Just, just messy enough. Yeah. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. It's good to be back. Excited we, to be here. Yeah. So we, we have, a ton of stuff we have to talk so about much to talk about. Yeah. Giant agenda. Giant. Yeah, I'm giant. And, and I think the goal is to not get through it all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you are really lucky, we will not get through it all. That's, yes. that's right. Uh, first thing we're talking about is today, out now, <gasps> in your local game store, <gasps> Magic the Gathering, Ravnica Allegiance. Is Ravnica that Allegiance. Yeah. Yeah. Is, there is. There are lots of Magic players here at this table, and one mm. sort of Magic curious. Magic I'm, adjacent. <laughs> magic, I, am, I, am, I am Magic curious. Magic like curious. Saying, I only have the one deck that I just use to, <laughs> to beat people and leave. Mm. Yeah, well, that's, I paid a lot of money for it. That's yeah. the way to do it. That's, well, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Uh, for those of you that may not know, Ravnica Allegiance is the second in the sort of non-block block that is happening right now in Magic mm. the Gathering. Uh, this features the second five guilds uh, from the Ravnica series in the first uh, set that was the... You help me out with this because I, yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot already. We Is talked it? about it. Thank you. Golgari, Golgari. Uh, Boros, Boros. Selesnia, Demir. 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 Yeah. 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 So, as far as I know, the three of you just made up five words. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this set, we had right. Simic. Uh, which is the best guild. Uh, <laughs> mutants, adaptations. Yep. The high level hot take on the guilds. Uh, Azorius. Uh, vampires. Or clerics. That's Azorius. Azorius is the lawmaker. Azorius is like. Yeah, a lot yeah. of like little knights. Um, yeah. 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 Gruul, which Gruul. is Smash. Smash. Smash, Smash, Smash. Smash, Smash, Smash. Yep. Yeah. That's mine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Smash, Smash, Smash. Smash, Smash, Smash. Smash, Smash, Smash. Smash, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it literally smash. says on the pre-release box, smash, smash, smash. smash, smash. smash. Orzhov yeah. is the vampires, yeah. like you were talking about. Uh, and what? Rakdos. And Rakdos. Spectacle. The, yes. the, the BDSM ones, that's why. <laughs> yeah. Because they're all about... Can you break these they're... down for me a little bit? Because yeah. I, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, so I hear smash, 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 but what are they? So, yeah. so we'll talk about it. So in this set right now, uh, there's a war is coming, right? Nicol Bolas, the big baddie of the magic universe, mm. is is slowly infiltrating uh, the world of Ravnica. And in the first set, a lot of the guilds start infighting. The second What's set... What's his name? Nicol, Nicol Bolas. Bolas. And he's the... He's like the big bad of the whole. He's thing. like this he's giant. He's an elder dragon. He's like he's one of the first Bolos. He who shall not be named slowly. <laughs> he's an yeah. elder dragon. Dragon. He's, he's yeah. an elder dragon. Oh, dragon. Okay. Yeah. But kind of a person. Kind sometimes. of a person. Kind of a dragon. <laughs> he's uh, very smart. Yes. He's incredibly smart. He's probably he's, he's one of my favorite villains from back in the day of Magic: The Gathering. Still my favorite villain to this day. Uh, and in this set, the guilds are continuing their infighting and they're essentially preparing for war. They're going to decide right now what's going to happen if they're going to side with Nicol Bolas mm. or if they're going to try to fight for Ravnica. Well, and I'd like uh, to point out, this is actually the third time that we've visited Ravnica. We've gone back to back to back um, to Ravnica. It's easily one of the fan favorites uh, for a place to go, and I think it's because of the guilds. Everyone can sort of find something they relate to in the guilds. So each guild uh, is two of the colors of magic. Mm. Um, so in this set, you know, with Simic, it was blue and green. Uh, Gruul is green and red. Orzov is black and white. Azorius, white and blue. And Rakdos, uh, black and red. See, and you just know all that stuff. So each... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Play, then players tend to gravitate towards the specific, uh, the specific color. Colors. Play style. Yeah. That's what I've always like. I've uh, always done is I've always like. Okay, well, I don't want to learn all of this stuff, so I'll learn this color. Right? Yes, yeah. and it also goes deep thematically as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like everyone can find something that they really like one guild over. Yeah. Um, and I think they really lean into it with this set in particular. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. the art and everything, just like with Simic being the mutants, and it literally like, all the. Cl uh, Creature types are like elf crab or shark to crab. Shark, yeah, to shark, shark to crab. crab. Card. Shark to crab is so good. <laughs> it's a card. You're, it, it is a shark, shark crab, crab. Something else beast? too. Yeah, something Maybe? like that. Let's yeah. let's let's break down. So we're gonna break down the mechanics for those of you guys who maybe are wondering what's happening in the okay, set. So if a shark and a crab love each other very, yeah. very, very much. <laughs> uh, the first one is the Azorius, and the Azorius is the blue white, and they're sort of the lawbringers. They're mm -hmm. the ones. They're the fun police. They're like they they're the ones that they will follow the laws, mm -hmm. but if they need to change the laws to make them, to, to help them, they the, will, but only them. Yeah. Oh. And so their, their mechanic is addendum, and addendum is usually found on a sorcery or instant, mm -hmm. and it's you cast a spell, however, if you were to play an instant, which we cast at any time, yeah. but if you play an instant 
on your turn as a sorcery phase, you can change the card a little bit to get some to get a benefit from it. And it's basically oh. like, oh, if you're a rule follower and you follow the rules strictly, you'll get even more goods. Yeah. Because uh, they're like that's like yeah. the like they're the fun police. They want everyone to strictly follow their rules, and if you do it their way, then like. You're you're better off for it with yeah. this mechanic. So they're the men. Never. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're there to oh, keep yeah. the other guilds from yeah. having any oh, yeah. fun. I think important side note: Nicol Bolas is actually infiltrated most of the guilds. Yeah. So like part of them going to war is like the heads of a lot of these guilds. Such are a plans great villain name. It's like, it's like you took Ebola and Nickelback and shoved them together to make something to make truly the, the awful. Biggest evil. Oh, I love it. Right. Uh, next up we have Gruul and one of my favorite mechanics on the set, Riot. And hmm. so Gruul is yep. green and red and it's the smashy smashy. Uh, they are they orcs or something? Uh, they beasts. I mean, they're giant. Giant. Yes, a thin flavorless soup. Right. So yeah. they, thematically they are very much about being primal. Like they don't believe okay. in like civilization, you know, affecting the nature. Yeah. They're, they're anarchists. Yeah. 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 They're really, really mean hippies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So their mechanic is called Riot. And Riot is when a creature comes into play, you can either give it haste or a plus one, plus one counter, which is so strong. To be able to have yeah. your creature attack the turn comes into play, yeah. or just come just in bigger in. than yeah. normal. Like, it's, it's it's insane. I think it's easily the best mechanic. I love that I'm following along with this part of the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get everything you just said. I have played enough magic. Well, at the pre-release I played in, the person who won the event was playing a rule deck. Yeah. Importantly, though, Riot stacks. So I think yeah. for pretty much all of these other ones, they don't really, you can't do it multiple times, but Riot can stack, and there's actually an enchantment that just gives all your creatures Riot. I had that <laughs> in my deck! <laughs> so I was playing... Oh, so broken. Just like pure value, pure, pure gas. So I was playing a Simic deck, and I had, I splashed the Gruul enchantment that gave everything Riot, and it was broken. Oh my god. Everything yeah. was huge, <laughs> everything was fast. Yeah, the come Simic and getting into to t oh. with like the Simic and the Gruul yeah. is definitely... Disgusting. Gross. Uh, next up, we have we have, we have Orzov. Uh, Orzov is Orzov or the uh, think think if the if if the church was run by the mafia. It's one of those things where it's like you're going to serve the church. Yeah, uh, you're gonna, but the mafia is I'm vampires. Catholic. The but, church is run yeah. by the mafia. Yeah. Yeah. But the church is. But then the mafia is also vampires. vampires. So you're gonna you're gonna pay a lot, mm. and that's the thing. And so their mechanic is called, and they're black and white, and their mechanic is called afterlife. Mm. And so when a creature dies, and if it has afterlife X, whatever that number is, then those creatures come back as, as one one spirits. Yeah, or and multiples. The, or multiples. <laughs> and it basically means that oh, you're like. Oh, you are with Azorius even or uh, Orzov, Orzov even after yeah. you die. You still have still, to come back and work for us. Yeah. You're still like, serving, you're still, you're still yeah. serving the Orzov. You still council. owe us your afterlife. It's like cabal of ghosts. Yeah, this is why I don't work corporate jobs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get that. It's really neat. I think it's a really neat mechanic. And again, mm. it, it's so well themed. A lot of these are so well themed, especially yeah. the fact that, yeah, you're, like you said, it's you're still working for us even after you're done. Yeah. I think Rakdos is flavor-wise, like mechanics-wise, like not necessarily my favorite, but flavor-wise, I think they just oh, like yeah, went wonderful. above and beyond. Yeah. It's all about like a carnival sort yeah. of a situation. So all of the cards are like jesters and like knife throwing, but the knives are actually like embedded yep. in the person. And nope, nope, like not for me. I'm Rakdos intolerant. <laughs> so <laughs> so Rakdos, Rakdos is black red and their mechanic yeah. is called spectacle. And spectacle is if a player, if your opponent was dealt damage, damage. you can pay a, a different cost for the card, and the spectacle will be something different. So, mm. for instance, you can pay a card, and maybe the card's now more expensive to pay, okay. but your opponent is forced to discard a card because of it. Or maybe there's a card that's cheaper to pay mm -hmm. to do damage to your opponent because they've already de been dealt damage. Essentially, like we said, thematically, you're creating a spectacle because yeah. Yeah. because you've drawn blood, yeah. now you get to have a party. Yes. <laughs> That's a good Which way to put it. So Rakdos. It's a blood party. Mm. Yeah. Oh, blood party. absolutely. Yeah, and they're called the Cult of Rakdos. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, so they're not good guys then. Yeah, it's, that, a... it's that scene in Blade where everybody's just do 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 you know how I'm I was yeah, actually the... just thinking about the <laughs> <laughs> That's what the White Wolf Party looked like in 2006. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're talking about for PAX? No, no, for Gen Con. Oh, Gen Con. Oh, man, oh, man yeah. Uh, and finally, we have Simic, the the, the finally represented guild here. Yeah. Um, and they're blue green, and they're like they said, they're all about like mutants and and uh, evolution and, and progress. Ev yeah, evolution. And their mechanic is called adapt. And I think this is really neat. And it's adapt whatever, and then you pay a cost. It's adapt X. You pay a cost, and if your character, if your creature doesn't have a plus one plus one counter, you put that many plus one plus one counters on it for the adapt cost. Mm. And like. Thematically, it's so perfect for Simic, and of course it's called Adapt, because Simic is all about evolving and believing that the best to become the best, you have to adapt and evolve. 
Uh, so they're like literally doing that on the cards. Yeah, it's a mix of like the science, like learning of blue, and then like the life and essence, nature, and nature and of green. Uh, another cool thing about Adapt is uh, it's instant speed. Yeah. So like, <laughs> yeah. not only is it, it, it's not as like on the face flexible as uh, Riot, because you like have to choose in the moment. It is always the counters, but you can swing in with uh, Shark to Crab, um, I think it's like it's a, a four, 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 four. Yeah, yeah. and then become Shark to Crab. Five, five, five. I think yep. it's uh, Adapt for one. So are, am I going to block or not? You know, I have all this open mana up, so it just like, gives a lot of power to psych out your opponents. Well, I think like each mechanic is so perfectly in line with the guild's oh, flavor. Yeah. Like yes. even just looking at Riot and Adapt, with Riot, Gruul doesn't think yeah. before nope. they act. <laughs> of course they have to pick right then. But Simic is going to like think yeah. over time yeah. and be very thoughtful and like, okay, when am I going to do this? When is it going to serve me best? I do have a question for the chat, uh, and, and I'll have either Derek or Kristen shout out to us. If you guys did go to a pre-release last weekend, because last weekend was the big pre-release, um, or are planning to play, uh, you know, this weekend, yeah. or playing MTG Arena, uh, let us know what what guild you've chosen. Because yeah. I'm curious as to hear what the chat says. Because um, so you uh, you went Simic. Did you? How many pre-releases? Did you do more than one pre-release? I did one? the one. You yeah. did the one. You chose Simic. You yeah. also chose Simic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I probably would have chosen Gruul if I had yeah. no pre-release, but I was I, I I was doing babysitting, taking there. care of my kiddo. We'll, we'll take <laughs> I one got second place. <laughs> nice. Okay. I mean, that's an important thing. You're almost victory. You, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned MTG Arena. Yeah. Uh, so one of the really cool things about the set that just came out is the cards actually released on MTG Arena, like. A week Which I ago? love. That, or is, like that is really cool. That's, so, I love Arena for that very reason. Like, yeah. I don't have to go out and buy cards all the time. Like I can yeah. still know how to play the game and be, I mean, not competitive because I'm terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but but I know what the cards do, and I know because I've got it on my computer. It, it is the best digital version to learn to play Magic that's ever existed. I was going to say, for those that don't know what Arena is, it is their free to play. It's an open beta right now, free to play Magic mm. the Gathering digital game. Uh, free. Uh, it's. And as people said, the tutorial, and Emma, we were talking about this before yeah. we launched, the tutorial is amazing. It's so good. It's really good. And the nice thing about it is you can, they give you so many free decks. Yeah, they just keep giving you free stuff. So you have the pre-built decks, and as there's, there's definitely competitive. I mean, if you're playing, uh, if you're playing in ranked, yes, there is the mono red slash nexus meta that's like battling it out right now. But there's a ton of space where you can just like hop in Play on play on non ranked and like have some decent games with the pre built decks. Like to yeah. have pre built decks that you can actually play, win, play, win <laughs> with. I mean, more importantly, uh, I think it's really great. It makes Magic really accessible. It makes if you want to get back into Paper Magic, it's a great point to jump back in. Well, and they do have drafts too. Like if that's your thing. Yes, exactly. Uh, drafts. Drafts are fun. Yeah. yeah, those are the only kind of things I actually play in. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, if you if you in the chat are playing in MTG Arena and you have not entered the code play, play Allegiance, Allegiance quite yet, go ahead and drop that into your client there and you get three free booster packs of Ravnica Allegiance. Right there, for free, for nothing! <laughs> we, just gave them. we just gave you, you Gen, Chon, Gen Con just gave you three free packs of, Alleg of Ravnica Allegiance. Mic yeah. drop! <laughs> just saying. <laughs> You know, maybe. And I may or may not have sent uh, Kristen some codes for a draft, a free draft. Uh, so make sure you pay attention to her magic show next week. Mm. You gotta check your email, Kristen. Uh, yeah. you got, We're Kristen, getting faces. Kristen now has three codes to give away on her Tuesday magic show for uh, free entries to uh, a Ravnica Allegiance draft. Nice. We got you, we got you, Gen Con. You sit there and you, uh, you hang out with us. Uh, speaking of hanging out, let's talk about Acquisitions Incorporated. Okay. Unless, did, you, did you have more you want to say about magic? I mean, I could talk we about it. We could, we could, we could. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff to forever. cover. We got, <laughs> we got a lot I got. Well, uh, actually, we never found out, Kristen, if you were to do in the pre-release, what, what good would you pick? Um, oh, yeah, yeah I, I like to just deal damage. You know, That's right. my thing. Like, yeah. I've always played, like, sorcery decks. I want to I want to burn people. Mm. So, where do I pick? What, where's my way to go? Uh, your, your best bet I want probably... something where I don't care if it burns people. I want it to move fast. Gruel. Gruel. Yeah. Gruel's the Gruel's way to go. Fast. Oh, there's burn in uh, Rakdos yeah. as well. There's yeah. some, like, to the face. But I am Rakdos like to... intolerant, right. as we discussed. Yeah, so, so probably Gruel is probably your best bet. Did the chat pick anything? Did we, did we hear anything from the chat? It's all right if we didn't. We asked. <laughs> 
green, white, white. Well, a lot of people love Selesnya. Right. <laughs> not even, not even in this set. I did. I did play Selesnya in the last set. Not yeah. even in this. Wait, which one's Selesnya? They're they're green, white. They're all about uh, what was it? They're, they're nature. Nature. Yeah. Nature and order. And yeah. Or, yeah. So the, oh. Yeah. Oh, and they're they're um so they're the Selesnya conclave, and, and they care more about the community than the individual self. Mm. So they're all about like you're supposed to do what's Convoke, yes. better for the greater good. Yes. So you should, like, so creatures. Mm. Yeah. They have such great They're names in magic. Oh, so really? Yeah. sounds like a character on Welcome Back, Cotter. <laughs> <laughs> They're basically a commune. Oh, yeah. yeah, commune. Okay. So the happy hippies as opposed to the right. very Right, the hippies and the happy hippies. hippies. Yeah. 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 All right, going away from happy hippies, we've got Acquisitions <laughs> Incorporated. Your source for adventures, they're always searching for interns. <laughs> That's... I don't know why they keep losing interns. It's just a thing. Because they keep dying. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that don't know, Acquisitions Incorporated is the uh, the group run by Penny Arcade and Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and it started out, you know, they did live games over at PAX, and they're huge. There's oh, now Acquisitions gosh. Incorporated. There's the there's the C team that they run. Mm -hmm. They're running so many different games. Uh, in fact, pro wrestler Austin Creed made his Acquisitions Incorporated debut at PAX South, Ooh. which was awesome. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a Royal Rumble this weekend. <laughs> I'm, Sorry. A, I'm an Austin Creed fan, and I love to see the fact that he joined in on this D and D, like, yeah. and now he's part of this universe. But their big announcement. They're doing a player's guide for Dungeons and Dragons. This is an actual Wizards of the Sanction. Coast sanctioned product yeah. of an Acquisitions Inc. D and D player's guide. So this is huge. This is massive. Why is this huge? For a number. So for from my perspective, for a number of reasons, this is a big deal. One, because this is something that Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons have never done, which is release a you know version of Dungeons and Dragons that's not. I mean, it's official, but it's not their standard official yeah. book. It's Didn't more. Did they do a Critical Role one last year? I don't. I believe mm -hmm. they did. They, they had a setting okay. for a Critical Role. Right, yeah. but not That's a whole book. Not a whole book. Yeah. Right. yeah. And the comedy angle, too, you know, right. that we had talked about earlier is the, the fact that uh, Wizards of the Coast is maybe like loosening up a little bit. Yeah, you know, yeah. Letting their hair down. I like a little, and, like, hey, we're going to party. Well, and it's, Shaking it out a little bit. Yeah. It's expanding their audience yes. in a way that they haven't done before. Uh, and I, I think that's really great. And I also think it's really good for beginner players, which I think Dungeons & Dragons has always been really hard to teach to brand new players. And they're trying to find a new way to do that. Yeah. Well, and Penny Arcade was the entry point for D&D &D for a lot of players. There yeah, were people that yeah. wanted just to see, you know, Mike and Jerry and their millions of guest stars come out, uh, you know, Will Wheaton, Scott Kurtz, mm. the, you know, the original Ack Inc. group. They wanted to see these people, like, just improvise and play together. And you had Chris Perkins, who is probably one of the best D&Ds, uh, the best DMs out there, being DMs able to just... Stars. Yeah, the end, of the, <laughs> the end of the stars. Star. But he was so good at being able to deal with four comedians yeah. that it just it skyrocketed and it became huge. And it's one of the things where so many players were like, I got into D&D after watching Acquisitions Incorporated. Yeah. And it's crazy that now, they were in the Neverwinter game just recently. They had they, Mike and Jerry voice. I heard about that. It's really funny. Mm. You're essentially trying to like <laughs> clean up their mess. Mm. Um, that makes sense. It's no. great, and you you actually they have like it's like a theme park ride on the inside. You have to you have to. So what you're doing is you're going through their trials to become their interns, but it's a basically <laughs> oh, no. a theme park ride that goes really wrong. Mm. Um, and then they're like, well, all right, I guess you're in. But it's really well done. It's in the Neverwinter PC game uh, and consoles. So we, you had mentioned that like people just like hold back for a second. People getting into D and D from watching this comedy show, like. People watch comedy shows, they watch SNL and stuff, you know, they don't immediately go out and become a comedian or whatever. <laughs> the fact that people are taking this and they're not just enjoying it as an entertainment and a product, but they're like going out, they're like buying the books, they're yeah. like playing, they're learning how to DM. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like this. Loading Ready Run was with magic. Yeah. Loading Ready Run sort of did the same thing yeah. with magic, where they introduced this whole new audience to it. And, you know, now that's happening with D&D. And the fact that Wizards just embraced that yes. and is now <laughs> coming out with a book like dedicated to that fan base is incredible. But the book is really pointed at that fan base specifically. Your average D and D fan might not, you know, 
take a second glance at it yeah. because right. of the comedy yeah. content. Comedy games and RPGs are incredibly hard to run mm. and to play. Yeah. I think it. Dep- I, I agree. I think it depends on your your group because I will try to run a serious. Well, I game. run a group of comedians. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So no matter how serious you try to get it, somebody's going to sit there and, and put in comedy. And I think there's something like it is funny, but a lot of the humor is emergent from their scenarios. Yeah. So it's like they're still fighting the same, you know, like waves. Like the one um, I always remember is the one with like the where the acid comes up through the floor oh, yeah. and they're like in the interdimensional yep. portal above and just like looking down and kind of like just the, the moments they had and the fact that they're willing to lean into disaster. Like um, uh, the one guy, I forgot his name, but he's like climbing down the rope. He's like, I pull out both my daggers. Like, how are you still holding onto the rope? And he just leaned into it. Yeah. And that was one of the funniest moments. He's just like plummeting down with both swords drawn. So just, oh, I think man. this idea of like introducing, and for me, I, I got into D&D like, fairly recently, like just a few years ago, played with a lot of experienced players and it was like really hard to just know like what am I supposed to do, what is the classes, even like having a strong background in fantasy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like oh, just yeah. Did you start with fourth or fifth edition? Fifth edition. So that's so I started in fourth and I felt like it was even a lot harder. Yes. Like yeah. fifth edition has come a long way for helping people get into the game. Yeah. Because yeah. I sort of dabbled with fourth edition and then like gave up and came back in fifth edition. I felt like fourth edition played like a video game and so yeah. it was, I mean, it was it was what it was. It's yeah. absolutely playable, but I was I wasn't a huge fan of it because I thought it was a little too simplistic. I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm laughing because uh, <laughs> our uh, our frequent beef is off camera, making all kinds of weird gestures and smashy, smashy face gestures. <laughs> I don't know what. Yeah, <laughs> Maybe. Not really sure what that Non-verbal means. Non-verbal right, Yeah. We need to. We sh- we'll bring him out here, get him mic up, and so he can have like. <laughs> we're, Maybe we're he was a fan of fourth edition. Maybe he wasn't. We don't well, know. Well, I, I feel like yes. We'll bring frequent beef's hot takes is. at the end of the show. <laughs> I feel like they're just doing better and better at figuring out how to introduce their brands to new players. Yes. And this is just another step. Well, the nice thing is they don't have a target audience anymore. No, and they yeah. always have shot at a target audience, right. and the fact that they're able to branch out and shoot at different targets, and <laughs> in fact, everybody. Mm. Yeah. Is. We've gotten settings in Magic Worlds now. Yeah, yeah Ravenica yeah. has their own setting. There was, yeah, there was the Ravenica yeah. setting. There was the they did a, a, a the, what's the the vampire the gothic horror one. They did a setting Ravenloft. in there. Um, uh, not Ravenloft uh, for Magic. Strahd. Uh, or, Strahd. Yeah, yeah. And an Strahd oh, yeah, setting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like it's crazy. It's, so the fact that in the same year. They combined Magic and D&D with mm. the Dungeons & Dragons, uh, Guilds of Ravnica, mm-hmm. and that they're doing this, like, it really shows Once that Dungeons & Dragons is just like, we <laughs> are now opening our gates yeah. to more things. They our our to, guild gates. They yeah. absolutely have to. They, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. If, they, if they want to stay at the very, very top of uh, tabletop RPGs, they have to do that. What I because think... Because there's so many other people doing it, too. Yeah. Right, and I think Wizards of the Coast is... is successfully putting themselves in the place where they're going to be like the kingpin of the gaming industry mm. you know just because they're not <laughs> yet well, well, but like they're they're setting well, themselves in a place to continue that yeah no they're definitely uh taking a strong point position on that right which is, and coming up to challenge that are uh is vampire fifth edition mm. with you you don't think so you don't think it's no. a challenge you don't think it's a challenge <laughs> They it's called mm-hmm. a segue. That was that was a good segue. Was a good, I'm I was totally try, into I it. I was trying. I tried, chat. I, I tried to ease it, us into a new topic. It also falls on the opposite end of that spectrum. That's true. There, well, I, I think what's really cool about this is, like we're saying, like the audience is so big. Like the pie is just getting bigger, and like uh, a lot of people are coming more into, you know, they're coming into uh, RPGs through D and D. But it's also splintering. So there's more right. like indie RPGs than ever before, more settings than ever oh, yeah. before. And like it in, doesn't in, have to be just D and D. Yeah, in so the I, middle yeah. realm with like above indies, like I would put the the vampire world of darkness stuff. Right. There. So like the more people you have that come into D and D, the more you have to get the, like vampire players. Is how I view it. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. absolutely. I, I believe that as well. Yeah, I, I think one of the things, and we had mentioned like. Uh, uh, for being like a video game mm-hmm. and a lot of that is I think one of the eternal struggles in role playing games is mechanics versus story yeah. and just this like and one of the things I really struggled with with the people I was playing was like very mechanics heavy and like yeah. trying to do like just like long drawn out combat I had a uh, session of 
combat that lasted for ten hours. That's oh, way too long. Over the course of three way sessions. Yeah, but that's like that is that's something like three that's... and a half episodes of a tabletop show. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it's terrible. That's something that D and D enables. Whereas like when I played World of Darkness, you just literally can't do that in the same way. Well, and that's why I love vampires so much. Mm. Uh, is that it's almost entirely story driven. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, there's uh, barely mechanics <laughs> to go up. <laughs> there's it's a crunch, crunch too. It's it's there's a little, okay, I got it. That's not, I wouldn't say there's barely mechanics. I play, I'm a very loose jam, and I'm like, pick what you want, and we'll get, like, if there's something I need to look up or talk to you about, I will. Until then, we're just going to play. Because that rule book is, like, massive. That core book <laughs> is giant. Mm. And, of course, It keeps half, getting bigger as It keeps talk. getting bigger. Yeah. Well, and then the first third of that is all lore, first of right. all. Yeah. <laughs> there's like yeah. a bunch of, now there's a bad thing, because there's just a lot. If you want page sections of lore sprinkled in as well. Yeah, 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 if you want lore, this is your book. But let's talk about what's going on right now. White Wolf, as a whole, <laughs> the exact <laughs> that. Gone. Stake through the heart. Blade came in, <laughs> took him out. Oh, They're gone. Call, yeah. uh, because Modifius has taken over. They're like, you know what? We got this. We got this, you guys. We'll yeah, help distribute. Like, we'll we'll take to prove we'll it. Take they're putting out what, how many more books? This four. Year? They've announced four. The first one being the Fall of London, which uh, it's really cool. I was reading up on it. And the Fall of London is basically a, a player's handbook so that players can see what's happening with this world. For those of you who don't know, Vampire the Masquerade Fifth yeah. Edition isn't necessarily a reboot of the universe, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, this Inquisition sort of happened. There may be a bunch of dead folks, or maybe not. Well, it's kind of up to Maybe yeah. there was yeah. good We're not saying. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what's going on now is, uh, you know, the fall of London sort of going to get into that. They're going to produce an actual player's guide, which is awesome. Uh, they starter need to. Set. Yes, they yeah. definitely they need, need to. to. That, like I said, that's where they've fallen off. Like, yeah. the fifth the, edition book is amazing. It's so if you're good. a Vampire the Masquerade fan, it's got everything you want in it after not having a book from them for 20 years or whatever it's been. Right. Uh, but you need a really good GM to sort of guide you into it if you're a new and player. And you need a friend who plays. Right. You yeah. Know? <laughs> really, more than anything, it's like, okay, what do these guys do again? Uh, and I mean, where It hasn't been quite as good about bringing in the new players, but yeah. that's what D&D's for, is to bring in new players <laughs> for vampires. Versus, <laughs> like, the shows, because I, I don't think as much, or at least they're not, like have as much visibility with like you know watching people play to get a sense because that's the thing even when you watch it's entertainment but you're also learning yeah. how things how how dms work you know like how roles work how items and those kind of things so is there a best way to get in like you're saying just to uh, have a good gm someone who's it's, played it's, yeah i mean definitely talk to talk to talk to derek uh yeah. he's, he's really <laughs> into it uh, but you definitely want to watch uh, Geek and Sundry has a show called Vampire by Night okay. or LA by yeah. Night I think it's it's uh, it's a vampire setting in Los Angeles nice. um, the, the the players got I think is going to be really helpful um, Onyx Path Publishing uh, did a Kickstarter uh, to, for a setting to be set in Chicago called Chicago by Night mm. um, they're all basically city by night yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the past cool. they've always done that mm. so yeah. they London by night I mean yeah. vampires because they don't do stuff during the day nice. for some reason yeah. which I don't understand <laughs> I mean, night's, that's how I live my life. Yeah, night's great. <laughs> I mean, probably a lot of us are very vampiric in nature, I guess. So. Oh, yeah. And, um, <laughs> just the night just gonna... thing. <laughs> <laughs> But so they've, so they've announced all of these books, and I think those books, and it maybe it may one of those things where you, like like Christian said, you're going to need a friend that's that's going to devour that book and be able to regurgitate the good points back to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you're gonna need to wait for the players guy to come yeah. out and be like, "Oh, yeah. that's what that means." But, which I oh, really think is, how I I, that's game. really what's gonna happen with my players. I have a feeling that my campaign will restart once I get those players guides in my hand and be like, "Hey, now we can remember how to play." Yeah, now let's I'm, figure this out. I'm really excited for the Modifius uh, takeover of the brand mm. because they have been doing great stuff mm -hmm. over the last few and years. It, it was definitely time for that to happen. I think. Yeah. Right, and I think like they are in a position where they can be very successful with it. Nice. I'd love for them to pick up a bunch of the other old White Wolf properties, too. That'd be I, great. Because I want to see all of them again. Well, and that's, that's, mm. that's the most interesting thing about the vampire, the vampire core book, is the vampire core book references werewolves and mages. And it's like, hey, by the way, this, this world of darkness still exists. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you may or may not come into play, depending on how you want to run your set. And I, I, love, I love Mage of the Ascension a whole bunch. Mm. Uh, and I like anything to do with fairies, so Changeling was a big yeah. one for me. But my absolute favorite White Wolf, old White Wolf system, was the Aberrant system, because I play anything with superheroes in it. And nice. superheroes with dots, where you just get to roll big piles of dice, <laughs> is really fun. <laughs> you should check out Spectaculars, by There's the way. Very, I, I'd be surprised if I don't have it. There. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk after. 
Right. Hang on, I don't see yeah. it on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have any papers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for nothing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you talked about you actually you talked about heroes and and you know wanting to roll maybe not big fools of dice, mm. but can we talk about uh, coming together as a group for the Transformers TCG? Their new expansion they just announced has. Foldable cards you can combine. It's transformers. You're literally making your transformer. They're coming. They're, and they're coming. You're going together. to form Card Devastator. Oh, that is wow. it's That's so epic. cool. Well, it's, let's, let's step back a little bit. Yeah. Um, there's a chance that a good number of our audience <laughs> doesn't know about the Transformers TCG. Uh, for, for better or worse, probably no. worse. There's like, it, within the gaming circles, they had a big launch at Gen Con, so there's definitely a lot of people who are very excited about this. Uh, but at least from the retail perspective, like in Mox, we have a lot of people coming in who are just like, there's a Transformers TCG? Yeah. So they're at, outside of some of the more hobby gamer markets, there hasn't been as much of a media push for this, even though it's a good, it's really fun, good, exciting game. Yeah, I found uh, that so interesting too, because I was like, I see it all the time in my in my Facebook feed, my Twitter feed, yeah. and then I remember, oh wait, I'm friends with everyone at Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, so no yeah, wonder yeah. they're hype about it. Right. Uh, I, I thought it was interesting what you were saying earlier, hmm. that uh, when you're when, when people are coming in to play this game, yeah. uh, because of the type of game it is, uh, I would assume that the game is geared towards younger people. Yeah. Right. It's based on a toy line and a popular a movie line and a comic book line. I assume younger people, but that's not what you've been seeing? Yeah, I mean, if you watch the videos, too, with, like, the voices and stuff, I mean, I loved it because I'm basically a child, <laughs> but it's definitely something where you could, like, show your kids this and, like, right. watch the videos, and it's kind of like, it's, you only have the uh, the two uh, Transformers fighting against each other, two versus two, right. you know, there's not a ton, there's a lot of it's just, like, combat, so a lot of it is fairly straightforward, but I think, again, um, and I haven't really been into more, like, mass market stores recently, so I don't know if maybe they're selling a lot of it, but at least uh, for what we're doing, like, our market tends to be more adult market. And Dude's those are kind of the people. Dude's grew up with the cartoon, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but I think that's a part where Wizards of the Coast has been trying to find, like, the young, the young audience card game yes, for yeah. a long time. Uh, and I think this was, like, their next attempt. Uh, and I, I, from what I hear, it's a really good game. Yeah. Uh, so like maybe it can fill that niche. Uh, I but it seems like it hasn't picked up that traction right. yet. Yeah. So I'm hoping this new release, you know, and the really cool mechanics and pictures that I've seen from the set. It's yeah. so cool. It's just like five Transformers being one giant one. Maybe I that'll would, bring the attention. I would be maybe. the most annoying player at that game. <laughs> <laughs> like every time I brought in a new guy, I'd be like, Shh. yeah, I was like you have to make this sound. You oh, have got to. Who can do the voice? Can you do the voice? I'm, not, the, I'm not doing any voices yeah, today. Do the voice. <laughs> no. But yes, I probably can. I was listening to the thing and the you voice You sound just, just like him. It's because I'm husky today. My voice is a little, uh, a little deeper than usual. You guys talk about wanting to get maybe some of that younger audience. WizKids is trying to get that younger audience with, uh, with the guy. They, got, they announced two games. Uh, and I know we were supposed to talk about two of the games. But I went into the rabbit hole for Kibble Scuffle Kibble and Scuffle. never looked back. <laughs> I never looked back. I it was might, like, I don't care about anything else. But that's other the thing, than it's, not, it's not a kid's game. But, but, it, but it's so cute that maybe the kids will want to play and do kitties and talk about the game. You guys yeah. got well, well, this is something, uh, and I see this a lot in the store with, I don't want to say necessarily mismatch of theme or like mechanics and the art on the box. We have a lot of things. It's either got like cartoony art or just like, beautiful art or just kind of like more casual art and you see these games and you kind of get a perception of a thing versus you know the traditional art of just like brown shades with a train on it you're like that is a game that is a very long <laughs> uh, economic train game on it. and you kind of know what to expect for it and this one it does have cute kittens on it but digging into it there's like there's phases to it. There's like a distribution of kibble between the different bowls. You're like <laughs> organizing your cats to this. This is a surprisingly strategic well, it's kibble similar. distribution game. Okay, <laughs> it reminds me it of just Cat like, Lady. Yes. Yeah. Like, Cat Lady was a, a drafting game. Yeah. yeah. Where you're drafting cats. Yeah. And it was actually pretty complex and a great game, like mechanically mm -hmm. and well developed. Uh, <laughs> but it was just adorable cats. Yeah. And I think like there's definitely an audience for that. It's me. Yes, um, it's me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. but, I am in there for all, every cat game. But yeah, any cat game, like you already caught my interest. Uh, so I'm excited to see. So it's it. really that easy. So when you, when you say um, 
what was it the, the more casual art is that what you said <laughs> yeah so I'm, I'm trying to think there's like, like i, I want to say like pretty art it's like graphically designed something you see like but you mean easier to draw right <laughs> I mean, when you say, when you say like, uh, there's a range of things anything from like cartoony styles to like just graphically beautiful style, something you might see like on a book cover or something. You know, you see, like there's one game uh, that came out recently that had a bunch of characters fighting and there was just like drama and art and it's just like a beautiful cover. And in the back of it, it's like a board with uh, different sections and like a million symbols on it and you move the cubes from here to here. <laughs> so I think especially for people who aren't as versed in tabletop games or hobby games in particular you see this like beautiful cover art it's like oh I buy you know I buy the book for the cover right yeah. but then you have kind of like it might be a two hour game or something yeah, if so. I was the kid that opened that box and I see all these cool gladiators fighting on the front and I, I yes. open it up and there's just like a board with some cubes, cubes. that you move around yeah. I would be so pissed yeah <laughs> and I think on the flip side too is like for some of these more complex games you know for the target audience like they might look at this and be like oh that's probably too casual for me right whereas if they open it up no, this is the perfect game yep. for me. So I think it's interesting how the art is getting better on board game covers, which I totally support. Like, I think that's great that you have visual interests. But it but has to be a, a match for yeah. what the audience is. Yeah. yeah. I think so the biggest problem with Kibble Scuffle is going to be where there's going to be, there's going to be, there's going to be, you're going to, there's going to be the kibble in the, the dish, and there's going to be the center gone where they've eaten, and the cats are like, I'm not going to eat anymore. Yeah. Like, you have food. <laughs> and then and they'll the immediately tell you they haven't been fed. I just yeah. can't yeah. see myself playing a game where you're essentially playing a pet smart employee. <laughs> <laughs> but that sounds like the best thing ever. <laughs> just well, like feeding. You haven't seen you their benefits like, package. Then, well, it's, it's all those great. cats, you just get a cuddle them. Well, yeah. then, well, then, Christian, we're yeah. going to do a section here I call Christian Speaks. There. Uh, <laughs> what, Finally, they're allowing what, me to talk. What, what, what kind of games would you play? For instance, maybe Battletech? I would play Battletech. Can we talk would about you? Battletech? No. We can talk about Battletech. <laughs> Let's talk about Battletech. <laughs> yeah, we're celebrating the 35th <laughs> anniversary of Battletech by they're putting out two new supplement sets, really. Wow. A starter set and a larger box set. Hmm. Uh, I'm really excited about it because... Battletech's been around a long time, mm. uh, and a lot of people know about it and don't play it Yeah, because of uh, the same reason people don't play Warhammer. Uh, and Barrier Sentry? Or? No, because all of the fans are in Germany. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's just, it's either you played it at the beginning and you've managed to bring a couple of friends in over the last two decades, Yeah. or you don't have any friends that play Battletech. Yeah. And, uh, and introducing someone, like getting out your things, like let's play Battletech. Like, yeah, sure, I'll play Battletech. And then they bring and out a like... giant suitcase with all of their stuff. And like, oh, I don't think I can play this game. That looks like my mortgage. <laughs> this is great because they've got a, basically a twenty dollar entry point doing yeah, you know twenty bucks. I mean, <laughs> come on, <laughs> yeah. not, take my money yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Right. And Battletech is great because obviously there are giant stompy robots in a mm. very very you know great tabletop setting. Yeah. But the lore is so deep that one website cannot contain all of it. Like, the mm. wiki is so big that wow. it would take up this entire table just in words. It's there. so, there's so much <laughs> over thousands of years, and it's so hard to follow. Huh. As somebody, I only got into Battletech a couple of years ago, and it was, it's been hard, so having these products out there is going to be great. Yeah. Because I can get my friends to play with me finally. There. Or more important, <laughs> Matt Shimkus can get his friends to play there. with him. <laughs> Well, you were talking about the digital as well. So mm -hmm. there's a digital Battletech game. In fact, if you look up Battletech, I was trying to watch videos of the actual <laughs> yeah. minis game. Yeah, Airbrain Schemes put out a video game for it last yeah. year. And it's, I mean, if you want to play tabletop Battletech on the computer, that's really the best way to do nice. it. Oh, yeah. cool. And, yeah. and the best part is I don't, you don't have to make the little laser noises with your mouth. There. Because well, you can, the computer you does want it to. for you. Yeah. yeah. It's just can not as you, fun. The, if you choose to. I think almost everybody pew, here can say pew pew pew. I okay, mean, cool. <laughs> we know what the sound is, guys. I well, I think this is like we had talked about Magic Gathering Arena, uh, and also with the Battle Tech, with the digital version. There, there's been an interesting tension for like tabletop versus digital, pretty much forever. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, really fascinating that a lot of these things, you know, a lot of tabletop games are getting digital version. Cat Lady has a digital yeah. version and the mobile version. I like yeah. that this worked backwards. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like the video game yeah. came out and then now they're, now they're doing the, like redoing the tabletop. Yeah, they're it. doing the tabletop and then video game. It, it's funny, it was like um, 
uh, Blood Bowl. All my friends were playing Blood oh, Bowl, yeah. Oh, yeah, Blood on, Bowl on Steam, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, it's like a Steam, it's like a video game where you like fight things. And they're like, no, Blood Bowl's been around forever. forever. It was like yeah. a, it was a yeah. minis game forever. And I didn't even know that, like, because I had only seen the digital version. Uh, but it's, I, I think, I think I love both. Like, I play video games I and tabletop I think they're totally games. different. Like, yeah. uh, gaming, they I are. think, is very important as, like, humans. I think tabletop gives us that face-to-face -face interaction yeah. that are very important, especially because we're on technology so much. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it's, like, becoming more and more important that we have these interactions. Uh, but because we're at home and on technology and a lot of us, you know, watch TV or play video games before going to bed, if you're into tabletop and that's your like primary focus of gaming, you also want to do that on your off time when you're not in person with your friends. Yeah, yeah. and one yeah. of the neat things about Battletech, and one of the ways it's always been, is it's not like a game that you just sit at home and play with your friends. It's mm. like you gotta go somewhere with a big table yeah. and so yeah. you gotta go somewhere. So it's a, it's a social outing in right. and of itself, just with a lot of dudes without girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> we, well, the, Having just like having the, the digital ones, then you know it's not necessarily either or. Right. You know it's great. Like if I if I did want to play BattleTech, I could watch these you videos. Do. I could. I do. <laughs> I do actually. I would love to play BattleTech. But like, to get into it, to polish up your skills, mm -hmm. like just for those interstitial moments. Like think of it as a digital supplement to the game you love. You know, it doesn't have to be taking away from playing the. Tabletop. I'm just happy that I get to take my time learning it now. Like when I first had to learn BattleTech, like I had to <laughs> learn BattleTech, and I had yeah. Yeah. I had a week Death. to learn it and nobody to teach me. Ooh, and, wow. Uh, <laughs> and it's like okay, now you're going to play on stream. Mm. There. <laughs> <laughs> We talked, we talked a little bit about how you're so excited that like you can now get your friends to Battletech, and we, mm. we actually have touched on this on Vampire and D&D &D and Magic mm. the Gathering. Do you Again, catalysts doing their job, do you, bringing in new players. Do you all feel that there's, uh, there's like, you know, a, new, a new renaissance, a new renaissance of uh, you know, these tabletop games bringing new players in? I mean, I feel like that's been building up for years. Mm. Do you think that we've hit it now? Now it's like, now is the time to get we a the font. We are getting there. I, I mean, I certainly hope that we're getting there. Like, then, I think it's very important. I, I think even breaching into the mainstream as gaming has been doing. Uh, like Bumblebee the movie with the trailer. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the nostalgia factor for it. So I mean, we've seen every like we talked about restoration games last yeah. week. You know, it's <clears throat> people. It's great making new things, and it's very exciting to like, oh, this is something completely new, and you know, you have a hype and stuff around it. But bringing back something that people love, you and, know, and changing you know. the things that don't work about it, yeah, exactly, which I love. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and it's no like gaming is no longer about a bunch of dudes in their mom's basement, yeah, right? Like it is now anybody can game. <laughs> yes, they yeah. they can still continue to game, but like. The, it is now and like bring everyone, everyone into the basement can. with them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, we're grown ups now. We have a gaming room. The, bring yeah. it. Wait. There's Move up, take over the whole house. Right? There's way more women. Like, I, I, there were probably a lot of women gaming back then too. Yeah. But it's more, more visible. visible now. Yes. <laughs> uh, and like the LGBTQ community. Yeah. And there's just been this huge movement for uh, inclusion and diversity mm -hmm. over the last few years. And bringing new players in is a big part of that. Yeah. It's a crucial component to that community. Yes. Agreed. So Christian, I, if we weren't going to agree about that, I think we should all be, you know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I disagree. That's People shouldn't be allowed to play games. We're talking about bringing new players in. Christian, bring us someone to Shadowrun. We talk about, like, who's played mm. Shadowrun, and we're all like, oh, well, we've funny. heard about okay. it. So <laughs> we've heard about Shadowrun. So when I first played Shadowrun, I had only played Dungeons & Dragons twice before. Oh, wow. And I was not very good at making a character, and I had died both times, horrifically <laughs> and terribly. Uh, making That's one of the best parts. I've making that movie. stupid there. decisions. Like, you know, like, ooh, a robe of blending. Oh, why is there a puree <laughs> setting? <laughs> there. You know? No, it's not a real okay. thing, but it was it was that kind of stupidity, like, ooh, a deck of many things. I'll draw nine cards, because I don't know what it does, you know? And, and then uh, the whole yeah. game is derailed, and my character is dead. So when, when the same group was saying, oh, we're playing Shadowrun next week, I thought, oh, shit. <laughs> because I don't know anything about it. Mm. What you need to know about Shadowrun, as far as the setting goes, is it's futuristic Seattle, where uh, the Native Americans got so angry that they brought magic back into the world by making all the volcanoes explode at once, Ooh. and now there's elves and dwarves and stuff again, there. and magic, 
and uh, also cybernetics. Ooh. We're like so a year from that actually happening here. Yeah, so. no, it's yeah, gonna happen. It's not gonna <laughs> happen. Come on, Caius. This, All right. <laughs> this is the future. Yeah, right. We are almost in Shadowrun times. <laughs> You're very close. So yeah, basically they took cyberpunk and D and D and just jammed them together. And the game was very, very deadly. And all they could tell me about was like, everybody dies in this game. You're going like, to die. I'm, I'm you're going to die. Like, look, the way your characters <laughs> die, uh, this is going to happen very quickly. So I'm like, all right, well, I want to make a good character that's not going to die right away. Mm. And that's how I learned how to break games. Mm. Uh, I've been doing it ever since. I, you know, I, I min max the crap out of my characters because nice. I just yeah. don't, I don't like dealing with character death. Mm. <laughs> from the early trauma. From yeah, role yeah, absolutely. Games. Uh, and I made a character that lived for like two years in that campaign wow. Wow. Uh, and managed to get himself almost killed just about every session. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Worked out well. But uh, I, I enjoyed the game so much that over the years I've, uh, I mean, I wrote a movie about it. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, but obviously I, I, I like Shadowrun a lot. <laughs> right. Uh, well, it's the 30th anniversary coming mm -hmm. up. They have a, they've got a new logo uh, and some new clothing. And that's kind of all we know right now. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, a big, it's a big secret. I guess. Maybe, maybe they're going to do a special event. Maybe they're just going to put out a sweatshirt. There. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what matters is that this game is important. Yeah. You know, it, it, it kind of mixed that cyberpunk and the fantasy genre together for maybe the first time mm. successfully in a game that was very, very fast-paced and is still fun to play after 30 years. Speaking of fun to play after 30 years or so, let's talk about Robotech. Robotech! <laughs> All right. This is just the Christian hype yeah. like, All right. section. Everything. I love yeah, it. How are you even surviving? Well, All right. So, uh, I know. You can, you're you're going to go broker. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Savage Worlds by Pinnacle Entertainment is putting out a Robotech book. That's so it's neat. It's an RPG book for Robotech, which uh, Robotech was originally published by Palladium, the same uh, group that published Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, oh, Teenage yeah. Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness. Rifts, which is obviously its most popular setting. Robotech kind of fell somewhere in the middle. Robotech is famous as a role-playing game because uh, it basically invented the mega damage that became very popular and the core <laughs> mechanic in Rifts. Mega so, damage. Yes, mega damage <laughs> is one of the things that made Rifts a very popular setting. Mm. Almost unplayable. Mm. Uh, but that was invented by Robotech. So all of you Rifts haters out there, it's Robotech's fault. Don't ever forget that. <laughs> uh, however, Savage Worlds, like I said, is putting out an RPG book of Robotech. This is the same company that makes the Savage Worlds role-playing game, mm. which is arguably one of the best tabletop role-playing game experiences you can have. It's very, very fast-paced and still tactical, so it's crunchy and has lots of room for nice. story development. They took over uh, Rifts, uh, I think two years ago now, and put out a Rifts book. And as a fan of Rifts... Uh, I will say that it is the best the game has ever played. Hmm. Hmm. So if they can do with Robotech what they did with Rifts, Rifts yeah. I am so excited because what's better than fighting in giant stompy robots? Fighting in giant stompy robots that can transform into jets. <laughs> <laughs> that is your assumption. Well, I mean, go ahead, try arguing with that. Yeah. It's, it's perfect life. I want to see. I would love to see the chat because the chat's like, I can argue with this right yeah. now. Yeah. They, can try. Yeah. they can try. Wrong. But since I can't see them, they are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have the microphone and I am charged. <laughs> Moving no, I on. Talk the loudest. <laughs> Moving on from Savage Worlds to maybe a more exotic location. Tifa, let's talk about Puerto Rico. Oh mm. man, my Puerto heart's Rico. devotion. Mm. <laughs> Puerto Rico is. Probably my favorite board game of all time. Uh, you've Bold made me. You, she has made me play it more times than I have cared to have played it. Um, yeah, and I like board <laughs> games a lot. We own over 300 board games, so to claim like this is my favorite one, yes. very serious claim. Yeah. Uh, it seems very solemn. And it, it was in the beginnings of uh, resource management games. I think it sort of helped define the genre. Uh, it's pretty intense. It, it combines a lot of different genres, actually. Like, there's drafting, um, but it's a lot. You have to, like, really manage your board and different things that are moving parts, and there's a lot of different strategies that can win, which I think is always a great way. Is yeah. it the kind of game you can easily lose friends with? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like you can you can be like I'm gonna do I this mean, thing yes. and, you, and build here or. Can you be really or... bad at it? <laughs> yes. I mean, I've destroyed friendships over Monopoly, so. So like, it's not for you. Yes. It's, okay. <laughs> it's not on the level of like diplomacy losing friendships. <laughs> um, so just some minor tips. Yeah. I think it. I think it depends. Fist fights, table flipping. Mm. 
you have to play with people that are the same level of competitive that you are. Yeah. I think yeah. it's really because it's it's not a good mix of like you have like a casual player and somebody who's like super hardcore competitive. Mm. Like that's not gonna go well. But if it's like all people that are playing casually or all people that are super competitive, then it's a great game. Mm -hmm. well, we we had talked about uh, games coming back. This is returning to print. Uh, it, How long has it been out of print? Uh, well, I think the base game is still in print. The expansions, expansions. are coming back out, and mm. these are they've been hard to get for a while. Yeah, I'm not so sure exactly the how long. expansions are coming out. Uh, Rio Grande is reviving the Puerto Rico expansions now. It's, yeah. uh, so that's going to be it's going to be huge. I think, especially for people that maybe have only played the base game or have heard. Rio Grande is the Company. It's the company. Yeah. Yeah. Just like no, it's just the, the Rio Grande. The like, Rio you, know, Grande. you know the Rio Grande <laughs> River doesn't actually touch it's, Puerto Rico, right? No, just they, they do now. I think there's been a lot of like new board gamers who maybe haven't even played Puerto Rico. Yeah. I, Rio Grande. Rio Grande. <laughs> and I actually really, I actually really hope that it uh, sort of brings the game back and introduces people who maybe haven't played it before back to this game. Yeah, and just seeing more stuff. And when you see it either online, you see it on the shelf, there's like the game there can kind of disappear, but when it's there with all the expansions, you're like, oh, I'm kind of interested to see. There's different ways to yeah. play this. A or resurgence. Or, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm very excited because like I would just want to play it more. In the 90s. <laughs> yeah. And then, again, more recently, I think it came back Did again. Did it? Came yeah, back again. I missed oh, that. Maybe. I was like, I don't, I don't feel I was like it. Like that day, apparently. <laughs> maybe just a blip. <laughs> I think it was just a blip. I mean, yeah. Robo Fish never really went anywhere mm. unless then Jake still put it up. Which that's all right. We're not. <laughs> this is now the ska Off show. Rails. <laughs> no, it'd be rad. Uh, I've been skanking under the table the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, speaking of exciting things, let's talk about uh, the co-op rules for Discovery Lands Unknown. And, uh, and Emma, you were talking about this earlier. Uh, we, we, we leaned to you as our unique card there. game expert. <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. It's easy to be an expert because it's just such a new thing. <laughs> <laughs> like good. social media. The, my, my small little pocket of knowledge is uh, more than a lot of people have about this. <laughs> we, we talked about Keyforge last week. Uh, and in this phase of um, Fantasy Flight coming out with this unique Keyforge, like they also... They, they do so much stuff. Like, we were talking about this last week. Yeah. They also came out with a unique board game where they took the same principles from the... 2019 is the year of Fantasy Flight putting out every game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> every Literally unique game. <laughs> one of each. And uh, every Star Wars game. And every Star so Wars game. It, it's a little different than Keyforge, uh, where Keyforge is the randomized deck of cards. Discovery has just tons of stuff. It's got, like, place tiles. It's got items. It's got cards. It's got just, like, a box full of, like... Really cool, interesting bits. The more Definitely. bits there are, the more interested I am. Yes. <laughs> very Does it have little tokens bits. that I can press yes. out of a card? Okay, they're they're very, they're yeah. Yeah. like fish tokens, like fire tokens. It's basically Survivor, the board game. Oh. Uh, you have so fish tokens. <laughs> you can be but, a, but a fisher person, but, but co op now. So, so, so it's the Hunger uh, Games. Yes. Co but co op? But co -op? They hardly remember in one of the ones, I don't know, in one of the movies that was like, hey, we're teens now. Did you, did you watch any of those? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I try not to. And so people are really excited about having a co-op version. Like, I think competitive games are great. People are excited to kind of, like, Galapagos is another one where you're kind of, like, fighting off. It's like this uh, working together, kind of, but not really. I'll throw you under the bus if, it, if I win doing that. Like, it's a great <laughs> style of gameplay, but having pure co-op, especially with this unique experience, I think it can really bring people in uh, and engage the audience more to yeah. say like, hey, I want to have these different experiences because we're going to go on a bunch of adventures together. Yeah. So I think the co-op kind of fits potentially a little more. I love the semi-co-op, somewhat competitive games yeah. like uh, Camp Grizzly. Mm. You ever played that? No. Oh. That's one where you're all like counselors at a camp, and there's, oh. and there's, an there's a killer. Yeah, there's a killer, and a, yeah. yeah, you, you all work together or apart from each other. And that sounds like a game I would be all. About. It's so good. Oh, we gotta we gotta look this one up. It's like Betrayal at House of the Hill. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a bit like that, but more fun. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, like we we've all played co-op games. Like you can still be that person. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Even though you're cooperating, you I love that you look that at I love that you look at Christian for that. Like you can <laughs> still be. Because we know. We know. We, I yeah. don't play that person. I'm very cooperative. So like, no, I totally don't have any fish. Oh, wait, oops, there was fish here the whole time. Yeah, did you remember to press them out of the loop? Yeah. <laughs> Just, I ate them, I was hungry, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, well, with the, um, like, Gloomhaven. 
You know, it's got like the, it is cooperative, it's completely cooperative, but having those hidden goals, you know, there are right. ways that you can kind of like. I still, Ooh, Dead I of Winter! I've still not played Gloomhaven yeah. and yeah. I so badly want to. Have you played Dead of Winter? No. That is a fantastic co op game where you, there's like a one in eighth chance that someone's a traitor. Mm. And it's but fantastic. it could be. But there, there there it could not be. It could not be. You don't know. It's so, it's, it's my favorite. Did you have more than one traitor? There? No, because no. you know how like when you play Star Wars role playing game, everybody wants yeah. to be the Jedi. Oh yeah, mm. uh, but it's my favorite zombie game. It's essentially, ever. and the thing is, is, the zombies are sort of like an afterthought. The game is more about making decisions to build up your community, to build up your your section and board up things so the zombies don't overtake you. But the yeah. whole thing is, my favorite, and this is my favorite. We're going off the whole tangent here. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing about Go it is ahead. you have to make decisions, and one of the decisions is you can you can get this horse, and you can this horse can take you from place to place without having to worry about any zombies. But you have to give it. You lose more food at the end of your turn mm. because you have to feed the horse. Exactly. Yeah. Or okay. you can kill the horse and have a bunch of extra food for everybody else. Oh. Tough choices, dude. You'd kill a horse <laughs> even in pretend. They're even in pretend, you gotta kill. The, that, no, yeah. no, no. The game is so <laughs> good. No. The game it's is so real good. good. Like, no, 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 no. no. I just got done game. with Red Dead Redemption too. I'm not dealing with anything. <laughs> Any more horse deaths? No more horse deaths Spoilers. ever. So I guess bringing it, I bringing it back. Yeah. Horse death. That's not a spoiler. This is horse deaths are everywhere. They get shot all the time. No, this is about horse death I now. Think, <laughs> I think that there's like, always, no. that there's no. definitely, there's definitely room for more co-op games. <laughs> um, but less horse death. Yeah. <laughs> more co-op games where all the horses live and everything. And that's lives. our show. <laughs> Kristen's gonna Happily cut us off after. any minute now. All right, oh, all right. We got we got a few minutes left. We got a few minutes left. Let's talk about uh, the, the this. I just I love the way this is worded. The first premium expansion for the Legend of the Five Rings card games. Uh, L5R is, of course, the living card game. Um, I, Whenever people I talk to, to my fellow friends about card games, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a living card game. It just means you don't have to buy stuff. That is the worst explanation. <laughs> so I'm going to send it to somebody else. But they get it. My friends get it when they say but that. But that's so. not accurate. But it's not. You, but that's how I describe it. Like you, you buy, buy it once device. and you're done. You buy one of each and, but then, then, you're, and then you're done. Everything. Right. So yes. somebody, somebody better than me explain what a living card game is. <laughs> well, so it's you, as opposed to a collectible <laughs> card game, is kind of, it's, you, you talk about living card games as the absence of other things. So the thing, like, a lot of people love collectible card games, a lot of people hate collectible card games because it's kind of pay to play, and a lot of the stuff you're either, if you can, buying the individual cards or just buying blind packs of things, and you just have to do that and hope that you get, or trade, or whatever, there's this whole thing around it. Whereas a living card game has a lot of that, um, often there's like deck construction, you have a lot of the same gameplay of a collectible card game, but without that uncertainty yeah. aspect. It's almost it. like expansions for a board game, but it like comes out on a schedule. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. similar to... And it all furthers the story, making right. it a yes. living game. Yeah. Yes, exactly. All right, so we explain living card games, now let's explain Legend of the Five Rings. Okay. There. <laughs> Legend of the Five Rings takes place in... Uh, a not a real place, as I looked it up. Uh, Rokugan is, <laughs> is not a real place. Because you were like, I want to visit. I want to go It turns there. out yeah. it's based on feudal Japan, hmm. which I hear make anime. Yes. <laughs> yes. In feudal, feudal Japan. Japan. That was, feudal the, that was the biggest thing. Where they invented anime and Afro samurai. Yes. <laughs> I'm not a historian. <laughs> No, uh, obviously there's, it's based around several clans that are all, you know, based in feudal Japan, which yeah. has nothing to do with anime, I promise. <laughs> I'm not quite that stupid. But excellent flavor. I mean, it's because so many collectible card games kind of follow the same tropes, you know, is like have fantasy and have things like very, like treading the same ground. I think mm -hmm. L5R, even though it's been around for a long time, it actually came back. Yeah, it came back to new, life. It died. It died. <laughs> and again, now it's a now it's an unliving card game. An unliving card game. Yeah. <laughs> but again, this goes back. This goes back to the resurgence of games and the yeah. resurrections of games. But and this so, was this was dropped by one company and picked up by another. Right. Fantasy yeah. Flight. Like a, <laughs> by Fantasy Flight, who was putting out everything <laughs> this year. <laughs> Table takes presented by Fantasy Flight. <laughs> uh, presented by Gen Con. Presented by Gen Con. <laughs> Uh, but so this is, so they've had, you know, most expansions come out and they're, you know, uh, just like 20 cards or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like the packs. Like yeah. You get the but pack. this is kind of a super expansion. This is a super expansion. And this yeah. thing's going to have 234 cards. Premium. 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 Sorry, yeah. premium. <laughs> Next it's, level. It's, it's unique and premium. Shiny. If they're there's gold foil shiny. on any well. of those cards. <laughs> So there's 234 cards, and this game comes uh, with three copies of 76 different cards mm -hmm. yes. and one copy of six cards. 
So Those I'm, are the good ones, by the, the way. Yeah, ones. I'm interested to know, because I know I've talked to some people about playing L5R, and one of the things they're saying is, like, you, yes, you can buy everything, but you have to buy multiples of something. So, yeah. like, for the starter set, so, like... Are these you can only have one of each, or would yeah, you have to buy multiple premiums? I would definitely agree, because Netrunner was like that. It's like you had yeah, to buy the yeah. starter set four times right, yeah. to get one car. Right. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Which is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the people that are super competitive. So yeah, I'd definitely be curious. Uh, Chad, if you want to, you know, use hashtag table takes on Twitter, yes. uh, talk to us, because I would definitely love, you know, hit us up at Gen Con or at our socials, which we will plug I've got very them. shortly. Yeah, I've got a couple of friends who are super into L5R and have been since the very, very beginning. Mm, since the uh, first beginning. Yeah, and a lot of the Dead Gentleman guys specifically are all about L5R. Like, nice. mm. even, even on set during movie shoots, it'll be like the director yelling about the superiority of the crab clan. <laughs> 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 Where was that movie? There. I want to see that movie. Yeah, yeah. like the behind you know, the gamers we, 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 we couldn't find enough Japanese people for it. Yes. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Table Takes presented by Gen Con. Uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, with more hot takes for you guys, more hot table takes, if you will. Mm. If you Ooh. have any table takes you would love to share with us, use that hashtag table takes on Twitter, on the Instagrams, on the social medias, wherever you are. Uh, in fact, folks, do we want to do the Twitters? Yeah, yeah I was going to say, why don't you go ahead and let people know where they can find uh, you? You can find me on the Twitters at Tifa Robles. I'm also on the Twitters at Crash Jackson. <laughs> I'm at Emma Larkins. And I am at the Mike Robles on the Twitter. Once again, this has been Table Takes presented by Gen Con. We'll see you all next week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.